Hello world, I'm live. Jamie Sire is gonna join me in a matter of moments. And we're gonna make a tuna melt, not just any old tuna melt, we're gonna make my favorite tuna melt. One of my favorite bites of the entire year, a tuna melt from Golden, um, from Golden Diner in New York City. And here comes Jamie, she'll explain a little better, but we're gonna cook. This is what these lives are now. You hang out with me, we cook and we have fun. Hello everyone. Um, and you guys to join. Ah, oh, there's Jamie. Hi. Let me there turn down is. my, my um, phone. We're gonna cook and have fun. If you wanna cook along with us, it's a very easy recipe. It's a tuna melt. Put some stuff on stories. But honestly, the fun part is just hanging out and having fun. Um, Jamie, you wanna speak to So you've never had the sandwich, but I have. So it's gonna be an experience to put this together. Yes, I know. We're gonna go off of uh, your memory and my uh, cooking skills, I guess. But I have had lots of tuna melts. I would say it's probably one of my go-to orders at any diner. Um, so I would definitely get it uh, if I have a chance to go to Golden Diner, hopefully at some point. But um, I like that they have a couple of different twists that they put on theirs. Um, one of them is that they use Kewpie mayonnaise, which is like a Japanese style mayonnaise. They put that in there. They also put some kettle chips in. Um, so we're going to do that as well. And then a, a couple other things. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward uh, tuna melt recipe. Um, they actually have it listed in a Vogue article. So I took it off that, but it's all in grams. So I figured most of you probably uh, don't have a kitchen scale at home. And it was also more, uh, more tuna than just one little can. So I kind of scaled it down for that as well. So I have all of the amounts for you, but at the end of the day, it's all personal preference. So just add, um, you know, what you feel like is, is your preferred tuna mel amounts of things that I can give you kind of a guide of, of what they recommend. So I think it's gonna be fun. We're gonna, we're gonna have diner style tuna melts at home, uh, virtually speaking uh, to friends across uh, Williamsburg. <laughs> Yes, not so far from each other, but uh, yeah, I mean, to me, like this tuna melt, so if you guys haven't been to Golden Diner, it's in Chinatown, it's very like, it feels like an old school diner, like when you walk in, you're like, oh, this place must have been open for 100 years or whatever, but it's, it has that vibe and it brings like Asian flavor and Asian influence and like very like, I don't know if this is the word they want to use, but it does have like a hipster feeling of just like the eccentric part of the menu, I think is really fun. Uh, but yeah, this tuna melt, I... I been there three times. I think I've had it two out of the three times I went. Uh, two <laughs> times, just legitimately me eating somewhere. If I legitimately go to a restaurant to eat and not film, you know I fucking love it. Um, and yeah, the things that stood out to me about the tuna melt were butter, just like in the recipe that we okay. found didn't call for any butter, I guess. But it didn't. There's definitely butter somewhere in there. Um, okay. But yeah, the real, the real trick to their uh, tuna melt beyond that is salt and vinegar chips. So I know you're not, you are using a different kind of chips, right? Yeah, so um, we already had some of these uh, jalapeno. They, they're still kettle chips, but they're like a jalapeno, which I'm kind of excited about because I always like to add a little bit um, of spice to a lot of my foods and dishes that I eat. So we're going jalapeno because that's what we had, and I'm all about using what you have at home um, and, and making it work. And I also am going to do a little bit different bread. Justin actually made some homemade um, milk bread the other day. Oh, shit. Um, I, yeah, I know. So I felt like that would also, it was kind of like a nice nod to their, you know, their Asian um, influence to the, the diner style food that they serve there, or at least from what I've seen in pictures and, and stories from people that have been there. Um, so I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be a cool thing to recreate. We should mention that I, I believe they are still doing um, delivery and takeout. So if you do live in New York and you want to try the real thing and don't feel like cooking it at home, you could definitely uh, order it from them as well. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna use that bread. I'm impressed by that. I brought, I bought classic Jewish rye. Nice. Or deli, or diner style, I guess, New York City style. But um, yeah, what I like about this is, if you guys are joining me, you always gave me pancakes, and I had to be very scientific, and Emily from Food Lover's Diary yelled at me because I was measuring poorly. Today, it doesn't <laughs> matter, we're making tuna melts. I could do whatever I want, it's gonna come out delicious, which is the way I like you to can. Do. You can, you can do whatever you want, and like, if you like, having more onion or more celery or less mayonnaise or more like whatever you whatever you prefer you can kind of uh, customize that I will give you guys the amounts in case I know there are some people out there that really do like specific recipes and like to um you know follow a recipe know exact exact amounts and that kind of thing so I can give you guys those amounts but I will encourage you to definitely just you know do what you think tastes best taste as you go and 
have fun. That's the most important thing about cooking. <laughs> yeah, someone, someone just asked that they didn't realize or they didn't think about when you make tuna melts, you use canned tuna. Yeah, for it's tuna salad, tuna fish, whatever you want to call it. It's generally, I don't know why we use anything else beyond canned tuna. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think like, fr like a nice fresh tuna would be a good use uh, to turn it into tuna salad unless it was like leftovers. Um, but I did try to get like a, they recommended a line caught. Um, so this is, this is wild line caught tuna um, with nothing else in it except for the tuna. So there's no water. There's no oil. I don't think there's even any salt in here. I could I got wrong. tuna. No, there's in, salt. <laughs> I got tuna in water. Okay. That's perfect. That works wow. too. Um, Can I make a tuna yeah, melt quesadilla? Tuna hell, wait, yeah, hell yeah, you can make a tuna melt quesadilla. <laughs> there's what a lot of people want? that are very opposed to... Um, fish and cheese together. Um, That's a very like, weird thing. People bring that up to me too. I'm like, what is wrong with you? I don't agree with it. <laughs> I, know, I, I agree with it on some things. On this, I think canned tuna, American cheese, I'm totally on board. And the other thing I want to mention too about this recipe and what I read in that, that article that I mentioned is that you're going to be putting the tuna salad cold onto the warm bread that's already melted. So the actual tuna salad is still gonna be cold while the rest of it is warm. Um, so you're not heating up the tuna, you're not heating up the, um, the mayonnaise or anything like that. So, uh, so I do also recommend to, to, to leave your tuna in the refrigerator and that way all of your ingredients pretty much that you're putting in the tuna salad is cold. So you could have it right away. But also if you wanted to mix this up ahead of time, I know um, that the, the flavors will kind of mingle a little bit more and and develop so if you wanted to to mix it up the day before it'll be delicious if you make the next day too but should we get started i feel like great you told me the first step so i know i've been looking at the recipe just looking at the ingredients but i did not actually read any of it i'm gonna have you walk me okay. through <laughs> that's totally fine that's more fun right like this is we're actually gonna be cooking together and i can instruct you so i feel like um i mean the the natural way to start is with uh, some sort of like medium sized bowl that we can be okay. mixing everything in. Um, so we'll start there and we'll start also by uh, opening your can of tuna <laughs> and draining it. So we don't, we don't want any of the stuff that, that came packed in the tuna. If there is water, I think mine has a tiny bit of water in it. Um, but yeah, we'll just drain that off. So my sink's over here. So I will just quickly. I don't know. If, are you drinking? Tonight? Are you drinking tonight, Jeremy? Oh, I haven't really been drinking anything. <laughs> really? Good for you. I've been drinking every night. <laughs> um, Almost. Actually, I, I like, like everything in my life. Like, I don't think it's, I don't like cutting out things completely. I'm just not a big person that drinks at home generally. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just here and there a little bit, maybe like some brunch. Okay. Um, well, if, any, if anybody is drinking, I'll just say cheers to them. And if you are, you can let us know what you're what you're uh, sipping on. Otherwise, we'll just hang out. Jimmy, I have this can opener. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever used it. It looks very weird. Um, I okay. I've I've never seen that can opener either. But I think just try. I, it looks like it's um like you'll like turn the wheel to to cut it. Is that the only can opener you you have? I don't think I've ever used the can opener. Oh, so I was lucky in that mine had a little flip top. Um, oh, so I didn't have to use. All right, all right, hold on. <laughs> so this will be part of the, oh, yeah, I the I... adventure. Is Jeremy trying to figure out his own can opener? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, by the way, my cat Maze, like he has smelled the tuna and knows that it's open, and he is now on. He's now on the counter and about to uh, come join our lives. So just be on the lookout for that in a second. Here he is. Here he's. Okay, buddy, I'll give you the can when we're done. How about that? Has anybody actually used this can opener of any kind? <laughs> <laughs> I, the, okay, the functions so I was, don't even make sense. Way, is there a way to look? <laughs> this is great. Um, is there a way to, like, at least, like, hook it on to Oh, here we go. The, I got it. I got it. I, I love that. It. It. It's doing okay. something, so. Okay, well, that's exciting. All right, my, I'm going <laughs> to give my cat some of this tuna because he's, Begging. Here, here, buddy. I feel like can openers or something. You should, what was wrong with the other can opener? The old can openers. I know, no, I've actually been like kneeling down because it's a tiny bit. Yeah. Okay. That was Justin, a boyfriend and photographer. 
Um, so we got you. Are you are you on the way to getting the <laughs> the camps you know open? Because that is an important uh, factor. Uh, I mean, it's on the thing and it's spinning. Okay. So I'm just gonna spin it for thirty seconds. See if can that you pops like? Off. Can you like? Is there? There's nothing like to clamp clamp it down and actually like puncture. No. The, oh, there is. Oh, you think I start there? Maybe. I don't know. Well, no, just oh, like a little it did, wheel. Yeah, it, did, it did it. Oh, okay. Oh, perfect. I don't know. Oh, you know what it does? It's safer. Uh, it cuts under the lid, so it, oh, you don't get that's actually edges. safer. All yes. right. Well, now we, we we all just learned something. <laughs> uh, how much tuna did you put in there? I, I'm so I'm using the whole can. So um, basically, what I I was kind of playing around with the amounts and everything yesterday. So I kind of scaled everything down to what you would need for one whole can of tuna, and this would this will make probably. A, I would say enough for two sandwiches, or if you like want a really, really big tuna sandwich, you could do it all in one. But I think I think this would be a good amount for two sandwiches. Um, so you'll have extra for tomorrow, or for your tuna wrap, if you have another one. I, I eat tuna every single day, so this is good. You do like every single day? Wait, I you eat tuna, eat tuna every single day, and you don't know how to use your, your uh, can opener? I don't make tuna ever. Uh, oh, I see. You usually <laughs> just buy it already. I buy, I, it, I buy either pre-made tuna or most days I even just buy like a pre-made tuna wrap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair, fair. Well, now you know how to do it. Now you'll know how to do it at home. So maybe you can save some money too. Um, okay. All right. So put right. the whole can of tuna in your bowl. And then I kind of just like, it depends if you want like big chunks of fish or if you want it more kind of uniform, you can kind of break it up a little bit. Um, and then the next thing we're going to add is some finely diced celery. Um, so I figured out like it's really only like about two tablespoons or it's it's this much celery. So this kind of gives you guys a visual. It's basically like half. Oh, I was going to, I cut up way more than that. Okay, that's good. Well, you can, like if you want, if you like more crunch, um, if you like really like celery, I kind of just like it to be very subtle. And I also like mine very, very finely diced. So I can kind of show you guys that it's like very small dice. Um, that's just a personal preference for me. Um, so you can use, I, I'm going to say like two to three tablespoons. Um, so definitely not very much. It just kind of depends on the ratio. I would add a little and then see where you're at as far as like how you usually eat your, your tuna salad. Uh, um, I have a question for you. Yes, go ahead. Now, some of my favorite tuna salads that I've ever had, had okay. have called for, or at least had in it, some peppers. Some pep, what kind of peppers? Some like, some like you know, red the or The gross peppers. peppers, the bell peppers that are disgusting and Yeah, bell peppers. Nasty. Now, that's, <laughs> would you have taken them out of this recipe if it had called for them? Um, 100%. That would not be. <laughs> I love can't smell face. No squat. I love bell peppers. <laughs> Even I, when I make tuna, would never put bell peppers. Oh, okay. Okay, usually he's on the opposite, yeah. like, end of my bell yeah, pepper bell, bell beef. Pepper. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So, but I think tuna needs to stay made, like, maybe, like, top care. Oh, I will say, what, or sometimes um, I've put, um, like, some oh. pickle relish yeah. in. I like a, maybe, exactly. like, a pickle relish in there, which I would. Face, pickle too. Yeah, which would be, um, which would be a definitely a nice addition. We're not doing that because this is not what they do at Golden Diner. So we're keeping it, we're trying to keep it somewhat um, true to their recipe. Um, all right, so we have uh, a five ounce can of tuna. We have about two tablespoons of celery, maybe three if you like more. And then um, some finely diced red onion as well. I made this yesterday with yellow onion. It was just as delicious. I think also green onions would be nice. So. Again, use what you have at home. Don't feel like you have to go out and, you know, get it just for this. So. All right, it's um, equal parts, onion and celery? Yeah, so about two, two to three tablespoons of each is, um, is what I figured out their recipe kind of calls for in right. relation to a five ounce can. Um, but again, if you like, I'm actually added, I actually added a little bit more onion because I do like, I like onion better than celery. Um, so a little bit. That's just a personal preference, but yeah, just mix that up. And then, I mean, this is a super easy recipe. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is add some mayo. You can obviously use regular mayonnaise. Uh, we are using the 
QP, which I just found out today. That's how you say it, right? QP? Yes, QP. Pickles, yeah. There's a guy called um, that likes whole pickles on his side. Whole pickles on so, yeah, you make, like, two down just, like, traditionally. Okay. Like, uh, the relish, and then, you know, All like, right. Just, like, I support, I can support that. So if you want to, um, if you want to measure, I would say about a third of a cup. I don't, I don't know that that's necessary. You could probably just like eyeball it. And again, like whatever your preference is, if you're somebody that doesn't like a lot of mayonnaise in your tuna salad, then, you know, go a little bit lighter on it, but, um, you can always add more. You can't really take away. So I would, you know, yeah, I was gonna say, I, mean, I, think, I think like anything you should be tasting throughout and yeah, for sure. add more. All right. Yeah, and kind of just see what we're also going to add. And this would be a good time to add a little bit. They put a, a tiny bit of yellow mustard in as well, about two teaspoons if you are measuring. But again, you can kind of just, I would say like little squirt, like couple, couple little swirls of <laughs> of yellow mustard, and um, and then they put Tabasco in their tuna oh. salad as well. So I'm definitely on board with that since we already know that I'm using jalapeno. Uh, kettle chips in mine so again this is kind of a personal thing if you don't like spice don't use it at all if you like a lot use a lot if you, you know just just go with what you know what you what's in your heart for your tuna i have a question about tabasco so this one's fine i had a couple of bottles of tabasco that said they okay. expired i was like how could tabasco expire so i i might be a bad person to ask on this because i am very liberal with my expiration date Right. Um, I just kind of like see if it smells good, looks good, that kind of thing. Um, I think especially with hot sauce, um, like pretty much any hot sauce, like it's, it's peppers, it's vinegar. It's, it's not going to really go bad. In my opinion, this is also expired. Right. So we're both using expired <laughs> Tabasco <laughs> apparently. Um, I mean, if it's starting to just like, I think more than anything, it might lose some of its, you know, punch. Like it might right. not be as spicy as it usually is when it's, fresh um mm -hmm. i don't think it's gonna like totally go bad but again i'm i'm very <laughs> i'm very uh liberal with those i my sister is very like strict about it like if if it is expired it's in the garbage you know so i um i hate throwing things away so i won't throw it away unless i absolutely have to <laughs> um how is your your salad looking so far it's looking good. I probably went a little crazy with the celery and onion, but I kind of like extra crunch. That's okay. So. You can have the extra crunch and then you'll, you'll be ready to go for tomorrow. Um, so the other thing that we should be adding, um, just to kind of balance everything out and give it just like a bright um, pop of citrus is some fresh lemon. Um, and I actually learned okay. this from uh, Josh Capon when we were doing our chicken piccata um, Instagram live. He kind of cuts like the wedges off the side because then you don't have to deal with as many seeds. There's like no seeds there and you get still get a oh, lot of juice. Interesting. Yeah. I'd actually never heard that before. What about so, this trick? This is the trick I know from my years of producing food TV. Okay. Is that if you roll the lemon before you use it, it breaks it up a little bit and then way more juice will come out of it. Yeah. So th there, that is true. I've, I've also heard from some people that they, don't recommend doing that because sometimes it can, um, I guess, affect the, the flavor or like the bitterness that's coming out of the lemon. Um, but I, I think will it's more bitter? Uh, yeah, it can be. But um, I think sense. I might I like be getting that wrong. But yeah. So, I mean, again, I don't think it's going to be like a huge deal. But it does, I, I would say you're right in that you get more juice out of it that way um, when you kind of break up some of the membranes before beforehand. But I really like a lot of lemon. So I'm going to go a little heavier on this. I don't think they give an exact amount. This is kind of more one of those like to taste things. So, um, and then obviously speaking about that to taste, you want to add some salt and pepper as well. You can do kosher salt. I'm doing a little bit of um, just like this pink sea salt that I had in my, my grinder here. And then um, some freshly cracked pepper as well. You always want to do freshly cracked if you can. Um, it's just going to have a lot more flavor than pepper that comes in a container. So, it's funny. One, um, of the, one of the few things I've been struggling to find at the supermarket is pepper. Oh, really? Out of all the things, I can't find it. I don't know what's wrong with me. We're, we'll go through my shopping adventures as we get closer to because I yeah, have a lot less. of them today. But yes, yeah, so pepper has been I'm like I'm down to literally just like the last few little morsels. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, so when all this stuff was starting and I 
started to hear about the run on like paper products and whatnot, I placed a target order. And I was also low on peppercorns. And I just like threw that in my cart. So I'm really glad that I did that for a number of reasons, because now you can't get toilet paper or paper towel anywhere. And apparently, according to you, you can't get peppercorns either. Um, all right. Tastes How's, it, good. how's your tasting? Good. I like oh, just like, good. it's like just at the back end is you're getting that heat, which is really nice. Like you don't, yeah. it's not there, it's just, it's present, which I like. I'm adding it's a little bit more spicy. salt. Because I, I think the salt, salt is really what is going to bring out all of the different flavors that we just added here, including the lemon. Um, and that is one thing I would say, like a big difference between home cooks and restaurant chefs. And I'm obviously not a restaurant chef by any means, but I do cook a lot. Um, I think some people at home are a little bit scared to add enough salt. Um, obviously, you don't want it to be over salty, but salt really is going to bring out a lot of the flavors of your dish. So. No, I would say that the, two, the biggest difference between home cooking and restaurant cooking is salt and butter. And if you were in the back yes. and like you, you go to restaurants like, why does it taste so good? That's it. You'd be salt and butter, yeah. by the amount of salt and butter that is put into every single dish. And people will say to me like the same thing where you said, it's like, oh, well, I don't really like, I don't like salty things. But, like the idea isn't to make it salty. The idea is that the salt and pepper brings out all the flavors. All That's the other flavors. Doing. Yeah. Yeah. I think Justin saw that there was a question. Oh no, somebody suggested, uh, this uh, SP uh, Peter suggested you can get um, peppercorns on Amazon. Ooh, peppercorns on Amazon, maybe. I should look, Amazon's been very weird, but that it does yeah. seem like something I could get. So that's a good call. Yeah, I feel like some of the kitchen things on Amazon are okay. Other random thing, anything camera related, like three weeks delivery time. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna turn on my burner just cause it takes a little bit uh, to get warm. Uh, I will do that too. Um, this Iris M over here was talking about uh, red bell peppers in a can. So, like, you know the, oh, like the roasted? Peppers? Yeah. yeah. Um, no. No bell peppers for me. <laughs> no bell peppers at all. So in case you guys didn't pick up on the fact, I bell peppers are like my kryptonite. I, they are the one thing. Like, I think really the only thing that I will not eat. Like, absolutely not. Like, I will. I can smell them from like a mile away. I don't like their texture. I don't like their taste. People that tell me they don't taste like anything are wrong. They taste like terrible, terrible. Yellow, things. yellow, orange, and red taste sweet. Of course, it tastes like something. Mm, no, sweet, they taste crunchy, disgusting. And delicious they and taste, refreshing. yeah, they taste. They taste like something. They taste like something I'd never want to have near my face. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that the green ones are the worst. The green ones um, are the worst. Those are the most bitter. Yes, but I think in general they are added to dishes as filler. Um, yeah. Like I don't like them in crab cakes. I feel like if you put them in crab cakes, it means you're you're trying to mask the fact that the crab's not that good. So you don't need it. You don't need the bell peppers. I'm fine with spicy peppers, by the way, like jalapenos, Calabrian chilies, like any of the spicy peppers, sign me up. Just no bell peppers. Yeah, you do have some no bell pepper friends. Really? Yeah, they yes. a couple of no bell pepper friends. You know what, who else is a no bell pepper person? Sydney and Emily. Both I know. No I've, had, I've had this fight, these fights with Buckley Butter and <laughs> Filler Sirene many times. Uh, that, the food yeah. wars we have, usually Cindy is on my side. She's on the opposite side from this. The food wars I have with Emily are, is and I know you the, guys agree uh, on this, is mint chocolate chip. Yep, no mint chocolate, nope, no mint chocolate chip. Oh my God. No. <laughs> and, and wait, Emily's on that, on that side as well, right? Yeah, and Emily hates it. Or not. Cindy agrees with me. Cindy likes mint chocolate okay. chip. No, no, no. No mint chocolate chip. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> uh, do about, someone said, how about right hard boiled or... eggs in the tuna melt? I'm down for that. Uh, not for this sure. specific recipe, but yeah. Not for this specific recipe, but I'd be okay with it. But I also, by the way, I, I want to make, I'm really excited that I have the Japanese mayonnaise now. Um, and we have some milk for it left over. I think tomorrow I'm going to make um, the egg salad uh, sandos that you and Sydney made because I have been wanting to make them. I've been craving them ever since I saw your guys's. Um, Instagram live. So um, that will be my next creation with all these ingredients or some of these ingredients, I guess. Um, all right, let's see. So basically you remember it being very buttery. The recipe online um, called for olive oil. So I was gonna just do both, like a little bit of olive oil kind of to coat the pan and then I'm gonna like melt some butter. And I'm gonna yeah. use, I'm using like a cast iron skillet, um, mm. but you can use, I mean, 
Honestly, you can use whatever. I just I'm like using my go-to. a. I have a little electric skillet that I have on my counter. I use oh, it mostly okay. because it makes it easier for me to film. But it's actually nice. Yeah. It's it's decent. It definitely gets hot enough. It's it's a cheap one, so it's a little uneven sometimes. But for this, it shouldn't really make that. Big yeah. Difference. So I have like a, um, an external burner that I use for the same reason. Um, mm. It does get like it'll get super hot, and then it's very hard to like keep it where I want it. So we'll we'll see how this goes because I made it yesterday. I'm um, just on the stove, um, but I'm uh, I'm heating this. I added a little bit of oil, and then I'll add some some butter in a little bit. What else did you remember about this sandwich when you had it at Golden Diner? The other thing that I remember that we're not going to do is oh uh, the French fries. This mm. like I I'm a big salt person, and they salt the shit out of their fries, and they're so good. <laughs> Uh, but mostly, m mostly it's just like that American cheese. Also, mm -hmm. I think like that's a must. I don't get people that like look down on American cheese. They're paying like one for something like this too. It's the meltiest cheese, but it's it's delicious. And people that like put their yeah. name on that, I don't know what's wrong with them. Like, no, oh, I'm cheeseburger. on board with I will like... eat craft singles by themselves. <laughs> okay, so I didn't go craft singles. I like I got just I like the either. Boar's Head uh, American from the deli. By the Same. way, you were having a hard time. You almost had to go with like vegan cheese today, right? Uh, yeah, so my adventures <laughs> at the supermarket today were not good. Apparently, there's been a run on Kraft Singles. There was no sliced American cheese anywhere at the supermarket at any time. So I went to the deli and they were slicing some. But yes, I almost had to use vegan cheese. And I think taste-wise, it might have been okay, but I don't believe it would have melted anywhere close to what I would have wanted to do. No, I, I've only had vegan cheese a couple of times. And they've gotten a lot better with it. I will say mm -hmm. that, um, but nothing can uh, beat the real cheese. And Justin has his hand up. Do you have a question or somebody else has a question? Um, well, somebody is um, echoing something that I was thinking about earlier. Um, Billy Baru 74 um, he asked what type of tuna do you use? And to piggyback on that, um, I noticed that we got albacore. Yes. Um, so do you suggest a lot like albacore as opposed to um, the other kinds of um, yeah, I think solid white albacore is good. I think for me, um, the most important thing is to look, if you can find like wild caught or line caught, um, something like that. I think that that's just more sustainable. Um, and it, I mean, I think usually it tastes better as well. So, um, I, my butter is like kind of sizzling, Jeremy, so I'm going to stick my the, bread the on there. Stand by. Okay. Well, so I'm going to put my, uh, for me, I guess. yeah. Well, I don't think anybody can see what I'm doing over here anyway, but, oh, Justin's going to tilt it. Here we go. Camera guy over Back here. Back to work. Back to work. So one of the things that the article uh, talked about was like really, you know, being patient with your bread and getting it really nice and like toasty and just like, I think he called it golden brown delicious, um, which I GBD. am on board with. Yeah, GBD, golden brown delicious. Um, so you can also kind of press the bread down a little bit just so it makes sure it's like making contact all over with the pan. Um, but you kind of do want like a little bit of sizzling going on. Um, and this is also a good time to put your cheese down so it'll be melted by the time your bread is golden brown delicious. Um, and my bread slices are a little bit larger, so I'm going to probably go like one and a half on each, on each slice. Each so slice. I just kind of depend yeah, so it'll end up being like three slices of cheese okay. um, on mine. But like, again, that's a personal personal preference. Um, I'm just, I just hope my the skillet, oh yeah, it's kind of burning mine a little bit more than I wanted it to. Mine might, might be a little bit past golden brown delicious. Actually, I might have to start this over, to be honest, <laughs> because um, my burner is really hard to control and I think I burned my bread. <laughs> Burn bread. Burn bread. Burn bread. Uh, good thing I cut two slices. I, although I might not have any leftover for my egg salad sandwich. I guess I'll have to make more uh, milk bread. Yeah. Mine got really hot. This happens with this pan <laughs> or with this burner. So we are going to, you know what, guys? This is what happens sometimes when oh, you cook. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you blow up eggs, which I did on one of my first Instagram lives during quarantine, so. Um. <laughs> well, we've been enjoying it, so it's not like it, it totally went to waste, but I'm glad that I have some 
some backup slices here. Um, it's all right. We're just going to get the. Mine's cranking away, get, so I'm just let it go. Yeah, let it go. Mine, again, like, it takes forever to get hot. And then once it, it's hot, it's just, like, screaming hot. So, if my, possible. My, um, my electric skillet actually has its temperature gauge. Oh, which makes well, it a little easier. Lovely. Emily's here. Right, Emily, Emily we were just talking about, um, about our hatred for bell peppers and mint chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gangs up on me, Emily. Emily, your plant is thriving. Um, yeah, this burner is like not ideal at all. But we're gonna get there. It might take a little bit longer. What am you, I looking? Uh, what am I looking for it to look like? You want it? You just want it to be like that golden brown, delicious, the GBD. Um, uh, but yeah, that. just like uh, that's what it said in the article. <laughs> Ooh, I think mine's there. All right, I'm gonna take it I, off. All right, take it off. I'm gonna. I'm starting over. I'm taking all of the blackened butter off of my skillet because my burner got. See, my burner is like one, two, three, four, five. There's no. There's no. Uh, I'm gonna leave it on and just turn it. Turn it the skillet off. Yeah. So right. you might be tasting yours before mine, which is totally fine. <laughs> um and then you can start uh did you and you have the cheese on there too cheese is on there okay so yeah if it's if it's toasty and the cheese is melted then i would say yeah then you can definitely pull it off and then right. um and then i would say yeah start filling it with your tuna salad um and again you want to add it while it's cold all of our ingredients were cold to begin with so should be good to go, but I if you feel you're... like the secret to this is I'm not going to overload it. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be overloaded. But the other thing that they do there is that we talked about a little bit earlier is um, the chips, adding chips. Yes, so let me put the tuna down and then I'll put the tuna down and then wait for you there. Okay, I will. Um, I'm using a lemon to like pat the bread down because I don't have a spatula over here right now, but I'm going to go get one in a second. I am such a weirdo. <laughs> Jeremy's going to have this in his other video of me like patting <laughs> down and burning my bread. It's all good. It's all good. We're all friends here, right? Does anybody have any questions actually? Well, so you guys can see a little bit the bottom of my bread. How nice and toasted. Oh. All right. But well, we got a compliment on what? We got a compliment on your video with the Oh, thank you. Um, that was delicious, Jeremy. Yeah, I think you nailed it. Good job. Good job not burning your toast. Yeah. I'm jealous that you have a better electric skillet than I, I do. Uh, I'm out. I'm just going to say that gas, gas uh, skillet, I mean, gas uh, stove is the way to go. Much more, much easier to control, uh, to control the heat. I mean, for what I cook with it, um, pancakes, it's really nice because, again, it's, it almost disperses the heat almost better. For pancakes yeah. and a pan wood. Oh, probably, yeah. I'm just going to swivel this around. Starting to get um, burned on the wrong part, not the other. All right, I'm going to have just a little cheese break because now I'm hungry and I'm waiting for my cheese to melt. Um, what else did you have at Golden Diner that you really like? They have one of the best breakfast sandwiches I've ever had. Uh, they make a scallion milk bread bun. Um, what? And then, and then you can load up your options on it. Um, I believe I went. They do have it's hash brown egg, and then you could choose between like avocado, bacon, or sausage. Fantastic. Um, mm. They make a like a matcha coffee cake. Incredible. Okay. Um, I think that's it. I really want to go for dinner. I've never been for dinner. I've just been for brunch, lunch three times. Um, okay. But even like the salads look really good. They make like a matzo soup I want to try. Their menu is pretty much my soul coming out <laughs> of the kitchen. Do they have an egg salad sandwich there too? They do not. Uh, oh. I don't believe they do. Okay. They did a, they did a thing with uh, Combi from LA. So I know they did a little collab. Oh, oh that's it. right. That's right. I really wanted to go to that. But, uh... Uh, and then an off, we got an off topic. That's really on topic, but... Um... Mayo versus butter for buttering toast. 
Uh, for like something like this or grilled cheese. Um, I mean, the secret, another restaurant secret, uh, if you get grilled cheese at a restaurant, you mo they most likely buttered it with mayo uh, to grill it. Um, because On the it, outside. On the outside, yes. Um, which is maybe what I should have done for this because maybe it wouldn't have burned so quickly. <laughs> I think my, my burner that I use for this is just very unpredictable and tough to deal with, so. Um, all right, so I'm adding my tuna salad. My bread is a little bit not golden brown delicious. <laughs> it's more like really dark brown, but probably still delicious. <laughs> so I think it's going to be okay, though. I think yours is probably, it sounds like it was almost perfect. Yeah, I think yeah. what mine, too, is the American cheese was very thin. So that yeah, melted very quick, so I was able to get it out of there fast. To pull it off, yeah. Mine just started like burning almost immediately. Um, all right, so you're gonna add, did you already add chips or you're already done? No, I was waiting for you on chips. The tuna's been added. Oh, okay, sorry. I got my chips in. Yeah, so at Golden Diner, I think it's an option to add chips, but you should definitely have chips. And you use salt and vinegar chips, but okay. just give it like a real like punch in the face when you take a bite out of it. I like that, I like the that option. Just like a little, just different texture. Yeah, mine's not, mine's a little, I mean, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna cut off some of this burnt crust <laughs> and it's gonna be fine. It's fine, you guys. If yours is not golden brown delicious, it's not a big deal. It still tastes good, I'll tell you that. Um, they also recommended serving uh, it with a pickle on the side, so. Ooh, I didn't do that. Oh, actually I did just buy pickles, Sure. Oh, well there you go. Somehow, you know why? Because I made a salad last week that was really good, and it was um, onion, cucumber, pickles, wild arugula, just like toss with a little bit of olive oil and salt. It was delicious. That sounds lovely. Um, all right, I'm cutting my sandwich diagonally. So they don't do that. <laughs> uh, I want to say theirs isn't diagonal. Oh, maybe oh it, it is. is. I thought actually your photo looked very. Very much. Oh, yeah, it must be Zach. Like, all right, so, let me cut and then I'll show you guys. Right, I'm going to put it on the, this plate over here. All right, I'll just leave it on the floor. All right. You're on the board. I'm going to leave the show. I'm going to take a couple of photos. I got to say, it, it really does look exactly like it. Yeah. The one I made yesterday so. actually probably looked more like your photo that you sent me, um, just because I really nailed the, uh, the toasting as I. As we all know, I just failed on that today, but <laughs> I had to make another one. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Mm hmm. Do you have a picture? I am trying to. You're holding it. Oh, sorry. He's just going to take a photo. So we have one, although mine's not very pretty. <laughs> I burned one. I cooked this one uneven, but you know what? It's still going to taste delicious. Oh, wait, someone said they're watching while driving. No, turn off the goddamn cell phone. Don't watch this as you drive. <laughs> yeah, please do not do that. That's not, it's that gonna does be not saved. sound safe. It's saved in my stories for 24 hours, and then I'm making YouTube, and I'm making IGTV, and I'm making a TikTok. There'll be plenty of chances to watch this later. Don't worry. Totally. Um, all right, well, I guess I should finally bite into mine. Yes. <laughs> It's so, it's so good. I mean, I know it's such a simple thing, which a lot of people probably already know how to make this, but um, I love the addition of the chips. I think it adds a really nice crunch. And um, I really, I can see why you guys are obsessed with this mayonnaise. <laughs> um, no, it's delicious. It's unbelievable. And I've been saying about all the videos like I've been doing to cookies up. Like for me, when I cook, I want to make sure it's simple to make, Simple mm -hmm. to eat and simple to clean up. And this is very easy, which is what mm -hmm. I enjoy. If it's, if it's too complex, I'm just gonna feel overwhelmed immediately and not wanna do it. But we used one bowl, mm -hmm. I used one knife, I used one pan or whatever, and done, you have an amazing dish. By the way, if you guys like spicy stuff, I highly recommend trying some jalapeno chips in your tuna melt. It's, it's a nice little, adds a nice little kick, I like it. Um, here's a question because I put 
I put this on my story when we were promoting this Instagram live yesterday. How many people like really like tuna melts? Like I was saying, it's like one of my go-to diner um, orders, but I feel like it was about 65, 35 of people. I mean, most people do like it, but still like there was a big chunk of people who were like, ew. I got a lot of messages that were like, gross. I can't do canned tuna. Canned tuna is like bell peppers for you. Um, lots of, but there was a lot of strong feelings on uh, on tuna salad and tuna melts in general. Yeah, I don't really understand it. Um, <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with canned tuna. It's just mm. putting it in a can. Um, I mean, I'm not the one to ask. I love it so much. My favorite is, if you guys follow me, you know that when I fly, the only thing yes. I'm excited about flying about is that I eat a airport tuna wrap. There is nothing better than this airport tuna wrap. They have it <laughs> in a few airports around the country. It's like... It's from like the airport market. It's not like from one of the restaurants in the airport. It's like the Cebo Express or something, yes, right? Cebo Express. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> but they changed the wrap on the tuna wrap the past couple of times I've flown. Oh, and no. it's in like a gluten-free wrap. And normally it could be okay, but it's not the same. And I wrote a letter to the company and they've yet to respond to me. So I'm, oh, trying, to get the tuna. I'm trying to get it back. I'm trying to get it back. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention about tuna which is great right now, obviously. It's um, it's a good pantry staple just to have mm. around. Um, it lasts for a super long time. And you can you can make a lot of things with it, including delicious tuna melts that, you know, it's a lot of protein. You can do it without, you know, you can just have the tuna salad without the bread, which is, uh, used to be mm. like my post-workout, like, snack. So. Yeah, you guys could just use, so if you want to look for this recipe, uh, I know we found it online. It's not that hard to find, and we didn't we barely we didn't even use the exact measurements or anything other than finding the ingredients. So it's easy and delicious. It is good, and I'm I can post it too if that helps. But yeah, it's a pretty straightforward tuna melt recipe. But I do like the the fact that they don't put like the the salad on the sandwich while it's grilling. So you still kind of have like the warm, like crunchy, melty bread, but then you have like the cold. Um, tuna salad in the middle, which is just like a nice contrast. Yeah, that was new to me. I never thought that's how you would do it. I've never made one that way. Um, so I like that too. Yeah. I'm trying to get a photo of it before I forget. Mm -hmm. Basically what I've been doing is remaking all these things tomorrow and mm -hmm. like shoot, shooting them properly. <laughs> properly. So I make oh, everything multiple sense. times. <laughs> I can only have so many cameras rolling at once to make sure I get the shot. Yeah. I do not have... Not lucky enough to have an Instagram husband like you, Jamie. So <laughs> it's much harder for me to do stuff. <laughs> it does come in. It does come in handy. For sure. But he's actually just doing photo tonight because we figured you're doing video, so we'll, you'll have the video posted. You know, whenever yes. you get to it, and then I'll have um, the photos as well, and then I can also post kind of the recipe for people if they are. Oh, 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 my burnt bread. I, you know what? I might have to make mine again too, <laughs> just to get. A non, non-burned version. Cool. All right. Well, I guess if anyone has any last questions, we could do that. And then we've gone. We it took forty-five minutes to make a tuna melt. So I know it doesn't really take that long, but we wanted to. <laughs> I haven't seen this guy in like two months, <laughs> except on you know online, obviously. I but know. It's nice. It's like uh, it's like we're just like Facetime hanging out, and everybody else is just hanging out with us, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun, I like it. I think it's a good way to stay connected and um, these have been fun. We've been doing a lot of these Instagram lives. Like when we started out, it was like the first three weeks, I think I didn't even take a night off. We just did like straight through. Now I'm kind of like, all right, I can't, I gotta take some nights off from um, doing these Instagram lives. But for me, it's been fun just to connect with people even more over food and over cooking. And then also kind of feel like I'm still doing some TV work since all of my TV gigs got canceled with, with everything going on. So it's been a lot Same. of fun. And <laughs> hopefully if, uh, if anybody watching has watched some of our other ones, um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, I did think like it was a mission of mine. So here, like what's so funny if you guys don't follow me is my account is much more my, I would say my adventures in food, which is taking all the world and I go look for it. I mm -hmm. used to be a food TV producer. I don't ever cook because I eat very basic and healthy anyway. And I kind of like cooking for others. 
Um, mm -hmm. So like, that's why I like when we were making it, you know, open up the, the can too, and I'm like, I've never used my can opener in my apartment because I don't yeah. anything. But with <laughs> extra time on my hands, and also I was like, you know what, I think this is the time for me to, you know, try and learn some more skills and also have a creative challenge also. So the creative challenge was, okay, how do I make content if my content is all about me going to restaurants and traveling the world, which I can't do. <laughs> and two, like, okay, how, how could I leave this situation being better in some way? So I'm like, oh, if I could, you know, cook, I think that helps. And it's been fun. It's been like even right before we went live. Um, so I made with Emily the zucchini lemon ricotta pancake Saturday. All and right. I was like, oh, these are really good. Uh, um, but I was like, uh, it would be, would be very good at blueberries. So I made mm. a blueberry syrup and then made the blueberry lemon ricotta pancakes. And they were delicious. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I think that's what I keep telling people, you know, throughout this and people have been tuning in, asking questions, cooking a lot more like, like you have been. And I think the, the most fun thing about cooking is just like figuring out what you like and kind of doing that thing where it's like, oh, you know, what would be really good in here? Some blueberries or, you right. know, tuna salad. Like, oh, it would be good if we chopped up a pickle and put it in or some relish or some people might want to put bell peppers, not me, <laughs> but you know, if that's your thing. But I think that's what it's all about. And that's how you become a better cook is by doing more cooking in general, but also kind of just learning what you like, learning which flavors really go together um, and kind of playing around with it. I mean, that's, for me, it's like a very cathartic activity. I know for some people it's very stressful, um, but yeah, I like to, I like to be in the kitchen. I like to be creating and, you know, coming up with new things and, and all that stuff. So it's been fun. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I don't think we have any questions. So should we call it? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right. All right. If, you, if you are drinking, cheers. Thanks for, if you're still watching, if you watch the whole thing, thank you. <laughs> uh, yes. If and, not, this is living on stories. On my story is Brunch Boys for 24 hours. It'll be on YouTube, the whole thing at some point. Mm -hmm. It'll be cut down on IGTV at some point. It'll be cut down even further on TikTok at some point. So if you missed any of this, Ooh. you have plenty of time to uh catch to, to figure it out and make more and hopefully uh get yours golden brown delicious yes. so, <laughs> um all right well thank you so much for having me thank you guys for watching and um yeah check us uh check us out on our, our nightly instagram and we'll, we'll see you then <laughs>